Rodney, um, Victor, all of you all managed to get out of Noni's thing before I could get see you all. Well, you were too busy politicking and running for office. And we had to drive two and a half hours back to where we live in the trailer park. Yeah, no. So my son knows how poor my health is. So my husband, my son was dragging me out so I could get home because I, I just had surgery on my shoulder all kinds of other health issues. So he was just dragging me out. So believe me, I was not politicking. He was politicking for me to go to bed. That's what my son did. Not the way I saw you. I saw you running for office. I said, look at her. Robert Horsey, you know I'm gonna have to come down there and start and have a long talk with you. I'm just saying, that's what I saw. Uh-huh, you can make it up if you want to. Um, how was the family? How's everybody doing? Everybody's good. Everybody's staying uh, low key and all. Absolutely. And, good. And, and no health issues on your side of the world? Not on my side of the world right now. We all good, staying low, staying away from a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, so far, so good. Okay. So the way we start this, I ask you to tell us your name and tell us anything you wish to share about you that helps us get to know you a little bit better. Okay. Well, my name is Robert Horsley and uh, currently reside in the city of Charlotte. Grew up in the city of Charlotte. Uh, born and raised here. Uh, lived in the Baltimore, D.C. area for a number of years and came back. Fortunate enough to go to school at North Carolina Central University, number one university in the country. Uh, 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 that, that's me, just a, a, a regular old guy living in the city of Charlotte, trying to make trying to make it happen. So we all know that's not true. So we ain't even find that. Don't make me have to go down all the way down and get some information. You just can't volunteer and tell us. So what do you do now for a living? You know, I do I do a couple of things actually. I, uh, 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 I work as a contractor with the NBA on the NBA security side. So I deal a lot with the Professional Basketball Association. I am an investor in uh, 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 rental property in the city of Charlotte. I've been doing that for about 20, 25 years. I uh, work as a uh, technology sales guy uh, uh, in the um, industry of public safety. So I do a few things. Uh, so I'm, I'm a pretty busy individual. Uh, yes, you are. Hard to catch up with. Um, yes. Do you have uh, children and, and a wife? Do you have all of that? I do. I have all of that. Uh, of course, I have a wife and I have two kids. One is 23 and this one is 19 months. Wow. I, you, you have two only children like I do. I have two yes. only children. Yes. Two only children, right. I, the reason why I asked you that question was to ask you the question that I think most black mothers do and probably fathers do too. Do you have a concern for your child when she's away from home, especially the one that's able to drive and move about? You, do you have any concern about her safety or well-being? Oh, absolutely. I, I worry about um, her safety. Heck, I worry about my safety as a um, uh, uh, black male in the country, but uh, I have Guess I have the skills to navigate and to conversate and to deal with folks. Whereas the younger folks, like my daughter, who may not have those skills or have not developed the uh, know-how to interact with the uh, with law enforcement or any other people that may be a danger. Right, right. In the sense to her, so uh, yeah, it worries me, concerns me. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, at one time, you were a police officer or a yep. deputy? I spent, I, ten years, I spent 10 years as a, uh, a police officer in the city of Charlotte, three years working in patrol, and seven years as a detective before I uh, uh, migrated out of the law enforcement field as far as um, arrest-relating yeah. individuals. So yeah, I spent 10 yeah. years. I want to come back to that, but I want to ask you a question again. What were your feelings as a Black man when you saw Mr. Floyd on the ground under that police officer's knee? That could have been me. That could have been me or any of my friends that I know. Uh, we only we 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 are. That could have been me. I say that. I thought I, that's the first thing that came to my mind. That could have easily been me or anybody that I know that looked like me. Right. And 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 as a black man, do you feel safe in America? Do you feel safe? You know, you just said you work for the NBA. You've got all these other places you're going. And I assume that means you're out day and night. Do you ever feel safe, unsafe? I feel safe in the sense that I know that physically I can take care of myself. I'm smart enough to make right decisions. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm aware of what's happening around me. Uh, but overall, I feel safe. 
but I am very much aware of my circumstances and, and my surroundings. That makes perfectly good sense. So I want to go back to your time as a police officer. You know, so we've been hearing a lot of talk about police officers need to be retrained and uh, people are talking about defund the police and all these kinds of things like that. Um, is training the problem? Why do you think law, law enforcement, especially between black people and white law enforcement officers, why do you think that particular situation exists? I think, I think three things uh, 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 contributed to the problem. One, hiring and recruiting, they're not getting the, the right people into that job. Two, training is a big part of it. And thirdly, it's the culture of the police department overall itself. I don't believe in defunding the police department. And when they say defunding, I don't, I don't know most people that actually understand what that means. I think it means reallocating some of the funds from certain areas of the police department into other social areas. Yes. I will say this when it comes to the police department, that uh, people call the police for way too many things. You know, I remember being a police officer uh, I, I got a call once and a uh, lady called the police and you know, I walk in the house and some kind of disturbance and uh, she says, hey, Johnny, whatever her kid was, come on downstairs now. Police officer here is going to give you a whooping. <laughs> Good start. I mean, uh, lady, I'm not going to give your kid a spanking. That's <laughs> not what the police does. You know, they call you for that. We're not social workers. We're not the, their parents, you know, we're there to, you know, defend the Constitution, to protect and save life if possible, but we're not there to get a cat out of a tree, uh, give your kid a spanking, you know, things like that. So you get calls, all kind of stuff. And we, so training and, and, and hiring practices are a big part of, you know, I think part of the issue. You can't, you can't, you can't, everybody can't be a cop. Yeah. Everybody just can't be a police officer. And so are there psychological and mental health evaluations before someone is accepted as a police officer? Or is it just, if you apply, you have good credentials, credit, whatever it is, you get the job? No, for, when I went through it was, it was a lot of testing wrapped around psychological. If you fit the mold of a police officer, I think what has happened over the last 10 or 15 years, maybe even 20 years, when you talk about hiring the right folks, um, I think the pool of available policemen, the pool of those folks have gone down so much because um, if I could, if I can go make seventy-five thousand dollars working in maybe as an IT guy, or hundred thousand dollars working as an IT guy, why would I go be a policeman making thirty-five thousand dollars? So I think that the, the people that are in that pool to be able to become police officers, the pool of qualified or acceptable folks, they had to drop the qualifications down somewhat. Yeah, that makes perfectly good sense. And since Mr. Mr. Floyd's death, there's been a shooting in Atlanta. Two students in Atlanta were on their way, I guess, to get something to eat, and both of them were tased. And uh, I think, and I mean, I'm just talking about in the last four weeks, they found two black men hanging from trees. Um, and, you, you know, you have all these kind of things and you keep thinking to yourself, we're not listening or we don't get it or we don't care. Uh, what do you think it is? You know, I, I think it's a number of things. I think it goes back to, you know, the culture of, 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 of how police officers and how the cities and the makeup of those, those agencies are made. And uh, I think that uh, uh, in the case of Atlanta, when a guy shot uh, uh, the young man running away, yeah, 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 shot him as he was running away from that particular incident. I, I can't imagine me pulling out my gun and shooting somebody for running away from me. You know, when I was out there in the field, we didn't have tasers and we didn't have pepper spray and all that stuff. Either you had to uh, 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 control an individual uh, uh, by verbally communicating with them. We didn't have all that uh, use of force stuff that, that, that they have now. I don't know where that's come from. I think it goes back to, like I said, the people that they are really employing. Uh, I mean, it's sad that in 2020, you and I are having this conversation about thing that's thing that's happened back in the 60s and the 70s. You know, that thing that happened with Rodney King. What year was that? That was 1992. 
92. You know, that was awful. And uh, we saw that on the video. And then those officers, of course, was arrested and acquitted, uh, which was a shame. And, uh, you know, we've seen this over and over again. You know, the officer in Dallas walk in the wrong apartment and shoot the guy uh, in his own apartment. These guys out in Kentucky and Louisville, no, no, not one. I never heard anything like that. I know not one. I had never seen that. I heard about that. Uh, you know, I, I wasn't trained like that back in 1988 when I was a cop. I wasn't trained to use no choke holes. I wasn't whole trained to choke people. I certainly wasn't trained to shoot at people. We were trained back then mm -hmm. to de-escalate as much as possible because the last result is to hurt someone or to be hurt out there in the field. You will always de-escalate the situation as you, if you can. So we were trained, I believe, the right way back in 88. So I don't know what's going on with the training now. But, but. Let me ask you this. What's your perspective on this week? The first enslaved people robbed America 1619. Yeah. And from then to this very day, Black lives have had very little value. You know, yeah. so while you've been trained and you're a great police officer and you did what was necessary, there are some people who hold fast that if you're Black or Brown, you're almost inhuman. That's how I believe a man could put his neck on a man's knee who is handcuffed, laying face down on the ground, it must be that we're not that. And I would say you work in IT sales. I'm, I'm a technologist with 45 plus years of experience. One, I'm not a CIO, but two, I'm not paid equally to my colleagues. You know, so it's so much about our society that kind of keeps circling around, if you will. You know, you've got slavery, you've got Jim Crow, you've got Reconstruction, you've got um, uh, Civil Rights Act, Brown versus Board of Education, keep going, but we aren't, as a whole, making very much progress. Would you agree? Absolutely, I agree. Uh, when you mentioned 1619, the year the first slave ship landed in America, it landed on July the 30th, 1619. Exactly. Uh, and the reason I remember that date so well, that is my birthday. Oh, happy birthday. You get ready you know, to be yeah, soon. The, the slave, first slave ship landed. So, you know, since that time, since uh, 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 1865, when the Civil, Civil War was over, uh, Reconstruction period when um, uh, uh, the 17th president of the United States let the Union soldiers leave the South and, and the rise up of Jim Crow and the Ku Klux Klan. Um, this has been terrible uh, over the years uh, and it's gotten worse. You know, you know, we talk about removing these statues now of Confederate soldiers. They should have never been put up in the first place. And they were a lot of them wasn't put put up until well well after the Civil War, you know, uh, uh, when black people start to get a little traction. You know, uh, you look at Black Wall Street when it comes to Tulsa, Oklahoma, or what happened or, out or in Durham, North, North Carolina. Carolina. Right. Uh, 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 it just, just three officers just got fired the other day down in Wilmington for having a racial conversation about going out and killing all of the black N word people getting a high power. I mean, it's just, it's, just, it's just sad that as we sit here and discuss this, that the person that sits at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue uh, continue to divide the country the way he does and his party supports him and he's found enough people to support that nonsense. Yeah, ain't nobody's perfect. You know, president's perfect. But this guy's got to be the flat out worst that, that has held that office so, so, um, unqualified is it, it is i mean it's just it's a shame but that's what we deal with and then back to this pandemic what, what we're dealing with now with the with the health in this country we are we're number one in the world with cases and i really believe a lot has to do with the the administration believes that hey listen i gotta put that in my back back windshield and move forward no matter how many people get sick how many people die it's all about the economy and let's open up the country. And he has enough Republican governors around the country that want to try to open up the, the, these states and everybody. I mean, there's a lot of people dying unnecessary. Yeah, but you know, since the very inception of America, it's been money over life completely. Yeah. And it's always money over life. And COVID yeah. really highlights how important it is. You know, they're expecting teachers to go back to school and teach children who don't even know what social distancing is. And now you're supposed to put this little circle on the floor that says, here's six foot near these people aren't, aren't aren't able to do the hell even college students i mean you know you've seen some of the protests they're out there without masks and all that you yeah. know 
I, I think that we're so I think Trump is so so impressed with making sure his legacy says that he saved the economy. You know, where I don't even know what the point of that is. White people are already rich. They didn't need any more money. The, it's the people who, who are, who, like I told someone the other day, if the one percenters gave every black person a percentage of reparations, we would wipe out economic injustice. One percent, yeah. just the one percent. You don't have to yeah. go all the way down to the middle class or whatever. One percent, we wipe out this economic in injustice. Uh, as, as, you, as a police officer, have you ever shot anyone? No, I have not. Because that means you've been able to de-escalate the situation. Yeah, I think it's, it's it goes back to making good decisions or being uh, being smart about it. Could I have used my weapon uh, in 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 my um, uh, uh, performance of some kind of duty? Yeah, I probably could have, uh, but I think that um, that wasn't always my first thing to go to. That is the last thing you want to use. Because once you pull that trigger, there's no stopping that that round or that bullet, right? Yeah. So I, I've always kept that in the back of my mind. I always felt like I had to be safe, that I wanted to go home the same way that I got to work. So I didn't want to get hurt out there, but I wasn't going to hurt anybody unnecessarily. And I think with that mindset, that, that it served me well. And I think a lot of cops that I worked with in those times, you know, they didn't do that. There was some bad apples anyway. Just like here, you got some bad doctors, some bad lawyers, some bad policemen. You know, they probably need to be doing something different. Yeah. And, and you got to weed them out. So all of them are not bad. I think that cop that uh, hit his knee on uh, Mr. Floyd's neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds probably shouldn't have been a cop. Or, or maybe he was a good cop at one time and he didn't get enough uh, help or a training when it came to, you know, when you stressed out and you back up, you do something different. And those other three cops on the scene, especially two of them, I really feel bad for, you know, two rookies. They were not going to be able to stop him yeah. no matter what. You know, as, as rookies, you're not going to take over the situation from a guy that's been on the police department 19 years. You're just not going to do it. Yeah, I mean, it ain't going to happen. So they they were definitely – on the wrong call at the wrong day. It's just, 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 they lost their freedom, they lost their careers, and they're a mess. But, you know, there's not a lot they can do about it now. Yes. Where do you think black and brown Americans stand in the economic process of America, capitalism? I think we stand at the back. I think that, uh, I think that, uh, I think I'm a moderate. I'm a, I'm a Democrat, but I'm a moderate. I don't believe in too many handouts. I believe in working hard and, you know, getting it for yourself. But I also believe in that the playing field is not level for us. Right. You know, I think it's a hundred yard race. And we started the zero line and folks that don't look like us started the 50 yard line and win a race to the next we got 100 to go, they got 50 to go, and they want to know why we can't catch up, why we're not doing anything. Right. It's because the playing field is not even. Not you know, I, I tell people all day long, I really believe that our education system is so screwed up that uh, 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 here in the city of Charlotte, we have so many neighborhood schools. The city of Charlotte is made up of about 30% of people that look like me. Mm. And uh, uh, and we live on the west side. A few of us live on the south side. But everybody looks like me on the west side. And if you go to a school in the west side of the city, your school is 95 or 99% black. Mm -hmm. You don't have the resources. You don't have the best equipment. You just, they're, they're, we're back to before 1954 and Brown versus Board of Education with separate but equal. Not equal, separate. separate and unequal. Right. And that's where we are now. We, we are separate and unequal in the city of Charlotte. And uh, if, you don't, if you don't understand it and know the history of the city of Charlotte, know the history of, of you or your people, but know the history of this country and understand that you're not going to get any, people going to hold you back. Yeah, there's a lot of smart people that didn't go to college. I ain't got a problem with that. Right, right, me either. They use, they use that. You, you, don't, you can't get this job because you don't have a degree. Or right. 
you don't, you didn't go to, I mean, it just, I just seen so, so much of that. You, you held back by holding yourself back, by not thinking that, hey, listen, in order for me to get somewhere, I need an education. I need to know something. Yeah. And I think that's the key. I, I look at several people that I know that are in their 20s, that didn't go to school, they've had babies, and people try to talk them out not having these kids. I don't, you know, whatever, just doing, trying to better yourself. And they're not going to do They're going to always be in poverty. Yeah. It's not going to, you know, get them out of poverty. And so they shouldn't. They, they, you know, I don't, I don't know. It bothers I think education is a big key. Yeah, I agree with you. But, you know, I, I was having a discussion last night with a judge, and I decided not to upload his video because it was just not comfortable for me. But, you know, a lot of people say that, you know, we're our own worst enemies. And in a lot of ways, that's true, you know, because we don't advocate for each other. You know, we don't stand up for each other. We don't call, pick up the phone and say, hey, Larry, I've got a friend who's got a great skill and background. Give him a chance. Give him a shot. Because we know our capital, our social capital is, is, is vulnerable, right? So if you call up the guy and say, hey, give him a chance, he turns out to be a bust. Next time you ask him for a favor, he will say, well, well, Robert, the last time uh, I helped you out, you gave me this guy that, you know, really didn't belong with us. I mean, maybe you don't have good, good, good judgment or something, you know? And so. Yeah, that happens. That yeah, happens. Yeah. And so, and so in my mind, you know, when I think about this, you know, I'm just thinking, you know, I think about Selma, you know, you know what happened at Selma, yeah. um, you know, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, all these people who were really advocating for change yeah. were assassinated. And I will tell you, I don't know if this was true in your mind, but in my mind, the entire four, the entire eight years President Obama was the Obama president, I prayed every night that he did not get killed. But I just knew someone was going to kill him. Yeah, I, I did. I, you know, I wasn't worried about that so much. So uh, as we've gotten into the 21st century, when we, when we talk about, uh, 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 I guess I know law enforcement. I know the guys and what they do when it comes to serving and protecting the president. It's so 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 hard to get close to him you know uh 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 so i wasn't too concerned about his physical safety i was more or less worried about his mental capacity because they were trying to tear him down at every point but yeah you know, i think he was smart enough to know that he had the right people around him even folks that you know looked like him and folks that didn't look like him, but looked like him. and and really i believe had the best um best for the country in their mind and even the president before him probably wasn't the best president around but i think the guy heart was in the right place yeah absolutely. yeah you know uh 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 but this guy that's occupying the house now i'm telling you and i told people and, and this is funny i told people when he was elected you know before he was sworn in that if he didn't get us all killed the next four years was going to be comical Mm -hmm. Now, when I was thinking about him, when I said getting us killed, I was thinking about a war with North Korea or something with China, something crazy. I had no idea that this guy didn't care about the health and well-being of the country. We have over 122,000 people have died over, over this last virus. And I think that if he, had a, he, he was thinking more or less about the good of the country and not how he looked or what was good for him, Amen. that several of those folks, half of those folks may not have had to, 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 to Paris. If we just shut the country down, if he had been talking about, let's wear a mask, let's do this, let's do, I mean, just, hey, he want to talk about, he stopped people from coming in from China. Yeah. Okay, we didn't get the problem from China, we got the problem from Europe. Right. Came into New York, he didn't stop, and then after, even after that, so many other people still came from China. In China, so I, I don't know. This guy, he 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 pulls the wool over his base so well, they believe him. The thirty percent that he's got, it is unbelievable that he can get thirty people to follow him behind him. Absolutely. So that, that's a big part of our, 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 our problem too. Absolutely. Well, we have four minutes. That means you get all four minutes to talk about whatever you want to talk about. All four. You know what? I, I think this is good that uh, 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 that you are you, you're doing this and giving people a. Um, Hey, a uh, 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 voice to talk to, to maybe even vent about what how they feel and see what's happening in the world. There's so many George Floyds out there that you and I don't know about and don't get to see about. A lot of that stuff happens that's not on tape that that get investigated by the police and internal affairs, and sometimes that officer may or may not be disciplined. But uh, you don't get to hear that. That was such a 
a a shame that we had to visibly see George Ford get lynched right. in Minnesota because that's exactly what it was. This guy stood on his neck uh, with his with his um, knee and, and his hand in his, his pocket. Hand in his pocket. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Somebody tell you they can't breathe. That that hurts. Yeah, and, I don't know, you know, playing football, I've had the wind knocked out of me. That hurts when yeah. you can't breathe. It hurts. It hurts. So and, then the, was, and then the call for his dying mother, his, his yeah. dead mother. Right. That was the heartbreak for me. Yeah. And, and me knowing law enforcement, knowing, you, you didn't have to do that. You got four cops out there. Yeah. You did not have to. And the guy's handcuffed. So right. that was the big uproar. You know, so that, that's a shame that we've been discussing that in 2020. I look at the the U.S. Senate and I see that Tim Scott, you know, he gave us. He's the only person that looks like me in the Republican Party is in the Senate. He gave this this crazy speech about solving some police brutality and the bill that they put forth was just a. It wasn't serious in my book, and he's trying to defend it. But I mean, it makes itself look crazy to me. And then I look at people like Clarence Thomas, who's in the Supreme Court, who's who is so unqualified too, but he's been there since the Anita Hill hearings and he's been there about 30 years. And, and that's part of the problem with Trump too, I believe. He's, he's got over 200 federal judges placed on the bench from the district level to the appellate level to the Supreme Court with 2K. I mean, that's gonna affect generations to come because these people that are serving on the bench are on the bench for life. Right. And these decisions that they make or don't make will certainly affect people to look like us in a negative way yep. for a long time to come. Yep. Absolutely. That's beautiful. Yep. Uh, absolutely beautiful. Thank you for doing this for me. Yep. Uh, you still owe me about eight, nine other things, but I'm, I'm listening. Uh, put it on the list. Run it down. Uh, uh, then, like I said earlier, I'm a busy guy. You got to catch up with me. We'll talk again about two, three, four years from now. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I know that's true? Uh, I'll be busy, girl. I'm trying to make a living in this world. You just told us you work for the damn NBA. They probably paying you a million dollars a week. What the hell? I wish. I wish. I got to go to, listen, right now I'm slated to go to Orlando from July the 12th through October the 14th. All you summer gonna, long. You want to stay there? Yes. Are you going to take your wife and the kids? No. Wow. I guess you come home and visit when there are the opportunities. But I saw that they talked about going back into session. And, and to yeah. me, this goes back to what you said about the man that's in the White House. You know, like life, money over life, money over money life. over life, money over money, life. Money. Yeah, this yeah, this so, economy, so. this world, this our country is so driven about for money. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I'm very grateful for you for doing this. And you know, I, and I want to ask you. I know you're busy, and you said three or four years from now when you talk to me again, but I'd like you to come back and chat with us again. I think okay. what absolutely. you have to say and what you add to the conversation is very, very helpful. You know. Hey, let me know. Oh, absolutely, dear. So stay safe. Tell the wife I said hello. We haven't seen either one of you. Or at least I have not seen any one of you in a minute now. Uh, like you be hiding from me because you know it's going to be some rearranging of furniture. But oh, yeah. my Lord. Uh, oh, goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye, darling. I love you. Love you, too. Talk to you soon. Goodbye. Okay,